Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Bailey, aka Tufted Bales on all my social media platforms. Today I just want to make a little YouTube video showcasing from start to finish how I make my custom tufted rugs. So if you're new to my channel, new to the tufting activity, or you've already been a part of the tufting community, I hope you can nitpick one or two tips and tricks to help you in your process or get you started as a whole. So let's go get started. So first thing I am gonna do for my full tufting process is grab the tufting cloth that I have currently in my stockpile. And this cloth is primary tufting cloth. It's a little bit lighter than the others and it has these dotted lines for guides. Um, You're more than welcome to use any other kind of cloth like monk's cloth or burlap. Um, they are different mediums, but they all work just about the same. So here I'm just unraveling my tufting cloth that I got off of Amazon. So the tufting frame that I have built is a seven by five in size. So I do have to order the largest size on Amazon for this cloth. So just make sure you guys measure um, your frame before you buy your tufting cloth. And so here I am using the tack strips that I have applied to the edges of my frame. And basically the steps here are you're gonna loosely drape over your uh, tufting fabric and then work your way around each side getting the fabric as tight as possible. You don't want this to be loose at all. You want it to be so tight that when you flick it with your finger, it kind of just sounds like a drum. So working along the sides of the frame with the primary tufting cloth, this is probably the most important part when it comes to stretching your cloth on the frame. With the primary tufting cloth, you do have these dotted lines that kind of are a visual representation of how um, your cloth is aligned on the frame. You want these lines to be as straight as possible. Uh, the cloth is like a miniature grid. If you look up close to it, it's just a little grid of fabric. Um, and you want to make sure that's straight. So when your tufting machine goes through it, it goes completely straight up and left to right. So after you get your design figured out for your rug, the next step is to project your image onto your cloth. The next step in this process is very, very important, and that is to flip your images before you project on your cloth. The only thing that this really applies to is anything with words or numbers or anything that is supposed to be legible. Um, if it is just kind of like a symmetrical image, it isn't that big of a deal, or if it's just kind of a random image that doesn't necessarily matter if it's flipped one way or the other. Um, but yes, make you a little note, make you a little poster on your frame, on your projector, wherever you need to put just to remind yourself to flip your image before you start tracing. And here my client wanted a two by two rug, so we were just finishing out measurements there and confirming, and then we are on to tracing. Once you're wrapping up the tracing for your rug, I highly recommend you cover the projector lens with your hand to just make sure that you didn't miss anything before pressing the off button. Sometimes that offsets the projector and you don't want to move that from where it originally was because that just makes it harder for you to finish tracing. This step here isn't a necessity, but most people do like to write the colors um, on their rug where they're going to tuft. Some other people print out a colored image of their rug and hang it on the frame. Um, it just is all personal preference. With the outline done, I would say it's time to tuft. So let's go ahead and talk about the yarn setup I have going on here. So usually, most tufters would recommend that you use two uh, strings of yarn to feed through your machine. So knowing that information, this is how I thread my yarn through the machine. This is the tufting machine. I use a cut pile, and I ordered it from Tuft the World. And this is a jewelry uh, wire. 
I don't really know what to call it, but it's in the jewelry aisle. I got some wire and that's what I use to thread my yarn through. So you take the two strands and you're gonna put it through said wire or you could use like an elastic string kind of thing. There's lots of different tools you can use to thread through the machine. And take it like that. This is just a little warning for the new tufters out there. Anytime you are handling your machine and threading it or doing any other maintenance on it, please make sure it is turned off and unplugged. So you're gonna take it through the big loop with that little wire and then you see this tiny hole right on top of the needle. You're gonna thread it through there next. It's kind of small, so gotta make sure your wire's thin enough. And once you get it through, you're gonna thread the yarn through nice and tight and then unthread from the wire and you're about good to go. Go ahead and pull the yarn back a little bit so you're not wasting any yarn and you're set up to start tufting your first few lines. So no matter where your yarn is set up, you always just want to make sure that you have a little extra slack to work with so your yarn isn't getting caught on anything. So you'll see me pull this out just to get started to make sure it's set up in a good spot. So like I said, this video is just the overall process of how I make my rugs. There's not exactly a simplified tutorial on each aspect of rug tufting. Um, if you would like, you can leave a comment below on this video and recommend what videos I should make next for beginner tufters. Here I'm going to show you some of the little mishaps I had along the way. Just some dumb things that happen, happens to everybody, every tufter of every, you know, experience level. You can see that I just had some yarn pile up in my machine, left a little bit of holes, but that's easy. Another thing that can be taught is that tufting is forgiving and you can just pull out whatever you messed up and go back over it again. So we're going to re-thread the machine after I got that situated. What? What is it? Oh, just another knot. And I didn't catch it in time, so we're sitting here detangling again and having to cut things up. And then third time's a charm, am I right? Honestly, this is the struggle of tufting. There's always just gonna be a lot of start and stopping. Sometimes that is just the name of the game. So please be patient if you plan to start this. It is very, very, um, it, it just tests your patience. For the remainder of me tufting this rug, I am just gonna let the music take over and have y'all sit and enjoy this process and I will pick back up when we start to glue this rug. purchased a vacuum cleaner in and I currently am using this method to um, hold my yarn. I no longer want to make the little cakes of yarn and instead I'm just buying two of each color that I need and simply placing them in the box and threading my machine straight from the skein. So that is also another way that you can set up your yarn to tuft. 
Remember to leave a comment down below on what techniques or information you guys would like to see on my channel about how I'm filling this in or any other step of the process along the way. For now, we're just gonna let the video play out and then eventually get to gluing and backing. Okay, so we are now on to gluing our rugs. I use the Roberts 3095 carpet adhesive. I got mine from uh, Home Depot in the carpet aisle. There are several other alternatives that you can use to glue your rugs. This is just the adhesive that I happen to use. And as you can see, I just have some latex gloves on and I take big old scoops of the glue and spread it evenly throughout the rug. After the rugs are dried for a whole day, that's when I go ahead and cut them out to begin putting it back on them. The Roberts 3095 glue will remain a little tacky. This part could be a little time consuming. Basically, you're just going to want to cut tabs all around the rug. If your rug is more detailed, has a lot of more shapes around the edges, it's going to take a little bit longer. Basically, you cut little tabs and you're going to hot glue these little tabs down onto the back of your rug. This kind of creates a little waterfall edge as people like to call it. There are several, several different ways as to how you can back your rug. Once again, this is just how I do it. Here I'm measuring out some black felt and that is what I use for the backing. And I use Gorilla Heavy Duty Spray Adhesive. I don't necessarily recommend this adhesive. You can use any other kind of spray adhesive. It's just what I have on deck. And then after cutting the rug back into the shape of the rug, I take some hot glue and glue the edges down as close as I can. So when I trim the back, it's just nice and neat. Now we are on to everyone's favorite part of the process, shaving and carving. So these are the tools that I use for my process. I use kind of like a lint, like, scraper thing from the pet aisle. I use this little shaver thing um, and I use some tweezers and I use some scissors. So here I am just shaving off the top of the rug making it even. So I personally use scissors. Some other people use kind of like a chopstick, any straight edge thing you can to divide your yarn in between colors so your shavers can get in there nice and neat. That is what that is primarily for. Some people only use scissors when they trim. It just depends on the design for me. This one was pretty straight, so I didn't feel the need to like pause and use scissors in between. From here, I'm just gonna let you guys watch and enjoy the rest of the shaving process.
Here real quick, I just wanted to show you a side-by-side -side of what it looks like having a carved section and a not carved section. The top part with the teardrop obviously is not shaped yet, but the rest of the rug is. So this is just kind of an example of how the dimension can add to the rug. This is kind of like my finalizing step for all my rugs. It's just kind of going over the edges and making sure there's no loose strands or anything that looks a little scraggly, just to make it like a clean little edge for the side of your rug. Alright you guys, so this is the finished product right here. Um, this is a commission for a mutual, I guess it's from The Mandalorian, I've never really seen this show, but it was a blast to crank out. Um, so I did just want to give like a little disclaimer almost. So once again this video is just kind of like my process of how I go from start to finish. For anyone who's interested to start this activity, or you kind of like want to refine your process a little bit. If you're new, this is just kind of like the step to step of what you're going to need to do to make a rug from start to finish. So um, it wasn't really in depth or detailed about anything in the process per se, but if you're just interested in all the materials you're going to need, how much time, each little step of the process, this is what that video is for. If you're interested in more content, please don't hesitate to comment below on this video and let me know what you'd like to see. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you later.